Hey guys, it's a great afternoon because we just got our new to us BMW i3 back from Champ, the dealership where we took it to get repaired. We're here and in this video we're going to tell you everything that they did to it. We're going to give you an update on actually all three cars that broke a few weeks ago and the most interesting one of course I think is the Defender and there's a lot of news there but let's first go over what happened with the bmw and the tesla and then we'll tell you what happened with the defender this week so tommy the issue we had with this is we got a little warning that said we can't open the fuel door what was going on well this is an i3 so it's a bmw electric car but this one has the range extender and funny enough the range extender the little gasoline engine has been the thing that's been giving us all sorts of issues so these have a pressurized fuel tank and they have to vent the pressure out of the fuel tank before bmw allows you to open the fuel door and the vent valves fail it's a it's pretty known issue especially on the 2014s uh, anyway the vent valve failed and it also apparently filled up the charcoal canister with gasoline and that combination is what uh, tripped up the engine light yeah so we uh, first took it to our local bmw dealership we said hey this is what's wrong with it and they said the car is under cpo warranty and then we brought it in and they said it's not under cpo warranty so it really kind of got us a little perturbed so that's why we're here at chomp what we had to do was transfer the cpo warranty from the original owner that cost us 200 dollars uh to us and then we just picked it up and we ended up paying i think 239 dollars for the repair that actually cost 2000 because of the cpo now tommy People out there may be wondering, why do we pay 239 Well, 50 of that was for the deductible on the CPO, but 189 was for what? Hey, did you guys know that many uh, car buyer YouTube websites actually get paid if you buy the car or truck they're reviewing? Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Basically, if the YouTube channel tells you to go to a website and fill out a form, in other words, raise your hand that you're interested in the vehicle, they get a kickback if you fill out that form. At TFL, we don't believe in that. We believe in independent and honest reviews. Oh, and did you know that I fit under a heavy duty truck? How cool is that? Well, apparently they charge you for software updates, which is really annoying. Uh, but you can kind of see the work they did here. So we have the check engine lights. Um, we also talked about the fuel door not opening. They replaced the carbon canister as needed. Uh, you can also see the, uh, the pressure sensor there. And then um, the REX sensor, uh, the, the REX not turning on, which was a result of the other ones. And then they also did a big update. But you can see $189 for the labor, $50 for the deductible. Um, so, uh, total 239 Yeah, for a repair that normally would have cost 239 So uh, Well, yeah. 2000 Ed. Yeah, 2000 actually. So, actually transferring over that CPO warranty was a big advantage. I'm not sure why BMW charges you 189 for a software update, but I am sure that I'm happy with Sean because they washed the car, and that is a good thing. Uh, so, now let's talk about the other car that broke a couple weeks ago, and that was, of course, the, uh, the Tesla Model S. Remember, I couldn't open the door. Yeah, we bought a Model Y. Oh, Model Y, and not the, Model S. the yeah. Model Y uh, had this issue where the rear door kept jamming, but apparently they fixed it, and they fixed it really quickly, and they also offered to uh, fix our curved wheel, so that service will be happening sometime in early November. Yeah, and they fixed it uh, over the weekend, uh, and uh, it hasn't broken since then, so our uh, Tesla is in full and glorious uh, work ready to ready to go right yeah it's ready to go so the model y will be back on the channel soon we've got more stuff planned for it and hopefully that door remains fixed and now of course let's get to the update that you guys have all been waiting for uh, and that is our brand new defender now tommy i checked just before we did this video and we bought it 24 days ago yeah and it's been broken for about 20 of those 24 days yeah so if you recall the first thing that happened was we took it up into the mountains and we went down to keystone and with 167 miles on the odometer what happened was that uh, it got a check engine light yep so the check engine light came on brought it into the dealer to fix the check engine light and then they they, they did a software update and all the cameras stopped working and the cameras did this crazy 360 view and it does this um, third person view as well so they're really pretty cool and one of the big selling points of the car and all the cameras died including the backup camera so we picked it up for the check engine light fix dropped it back off for the camera fix and uh, then apparently while they were waiting for the new module to come in for the camera the check engine light came back on 
Yeah, and then they got the engineers in the UK involved, and they had a special engineer come here, I guess from wherever their headquarters are, <clears throat> to actually help diagnose the problem. And he's been going to the dealership trying to figure out why the uh, uh, engine light is on. I don't know where I got myself into, Tommy. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of in the back lot of Champ here, and we're lost in. I think this is their Honda dealership. So they said they replaced the injectors on the car, uh, but we are that didn't fix it. So they thought it needed injectors. It didn't need injectors. Uh, check engine light has still been a problem. So they're, they they took it from the dealership to a technical center in Denver. Yeah, that was this week. Yep, that was this week's news where they're working on it at the technical center. But we still haven't heard back whether or not they've actually fixed anything related to the check engine lights. All right, I'm editing this video as we speak. And Land Rover gave us a call after the filming of this video and said they have another update. They have looked at the ignition side of the engine, the electronics related to ignition, and they say all oh, that looks good. They tried replacing all the coils. Uh, so far, nothing has solved the check engine light. Now they're diving into the air delivery. So they're looking through the intake, seeing if anything is throwing a fault there. Now that the vehicle does have a check engine light on, but funny enough, the computer is not communicating to the engineers exactly what is wrong. So it is, uh, it's been, it sounds like it's been quite the challenge trying to figure out what is, uh, what's going on with this Defender and, and why is, why is something triggering a check engine light and what is triggering the check engine light? We've owned it. We took delivery about 24 days ago. Um, we've only had it for about three or four of those 20 days. The rest has either been uh, the first check engine light, the camera failure, uh, waiting for the new module for the camera, and now the latest check engine light. Yeah, and I, I tell me, I can't tell you how um, disappointing and frustrating it is to buy a new car, which is now, uh, you know, 24 days ago, and not have it be available to use. You know, I, I mean, we're lucky, right? We have a fleet of cars, so if the car is uh, being repaired, it doesn't, you know, cause us that much pain. But, you know, there's this, like, joy in getting the car. We waited three months for it. Uh, and now to, you know, have it at the dealership for almost three weeks is just extremely frustrating. Um, and they've been good at kind of calling me every day. So the guy called me every day and basically the news is the same. It's still broken. It's still broken. And, and at this point, after it's been there for so long, I'm getting very... Um, despondent and I'm wondering if they can actually fix it, right? I mean, it's it's a check engine light and they've got JLR mechanic engineers working on it and they seem to not be able to sort it out. Th this is something that I've never had happen to me out of all the, you know, dozens of new cars I bought. Uh, and a lot of you guys out there have been talking about lemon lawing it. What are the rules here, Tommy? You know that I don't want to state something incorrectly, so right. I'd have to kind of brush up on it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, the one rule is that you have to have it in the dealership for 30 days in the first year of ownership. That's one of the criteria before okay. you can lemon law it. Uh, and now it's been at the dealership for basically 20 days, so almost 21 days. So we're at, you know, we're at two thirds of the way to a lemon law. And I don't want a lemon law. I don't want to go through the process. I love the car, uh, but. What's the point of spending fifty five six fifty six thousand dollars on a car when you can't use it? But you know, it's 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 it, it just goes it just goes to some absurdity that I don't even want to get to. So let me know in the comments below. You know, what should we do with this thing, and how much more time should we give them uh, before you know we start to actually consider uh, having them buy this thing back? Uh, because at this point, it, it's getting to the, to the the situation where I think most people would probably be not just frustrated and not just disappointed, uh, but very angry uh, about their new purchase. Uh, so let me know what your comments are. Thanks, guys. As always, this is Roman. Yep, and Tommy, check out tflcar.com. We're going to keep you in the loop. So we've been doing weekly updates like this just to try to keep. Uh, um, we got a lot of questions and a lot of um, inquiries what's going on with the Land Rover. So we're going to keep doing these weekly updates about uh, when it'll get fixed. And hopefully within the, the coming days, we'll be able to get it out of the service uh, bay and into our driveway. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful weekend. I would love to take, you know, your mom, my wife for a ride in it. Maybe take it up to the mountains uh, and enjoy it. Uh, but as far as I know, on a Friday afternoon, uh, the car is in pieces sitting at some warehouse somewhere, uh, and I'm getting really frustrated, really frustrated.